We will talk a lot in this course about the domain and range of functions. So this is simply sort of a first look at domain and range. Domain is simply the set of all the x values that we have in a function, and the range is the set of all possible y values that we have in a function. So if I'm looking at the domain of this particular graph, looking at the x-axis, I can see that I've got values, I've got y values for all of these x's, and I could plug in, say, a negative 100, and I would still end up with a y value. It might be way, way, way up there, but I know that pretty much any value that I want for x, I could plug in, which means the domain is all real numbers. Most often we'll write that as negative infinity to positive infinity. That's an interval notation. That's typically the way that you will want to write it, interval notation. Now the range is a different story. Looking at the y values in this graph, I can see that my very lowest y value is right here at negative five. This of course is the y axis. My lowest y value is at negative five. What's my highest y value? Well, these would go on forever and ever, so that would go off to infinity. So my range would be starting at negative five, and negative five is included, so that's that closed bracket, because this point is exactly at negative five, up to positive infinity, and you can never include infinity. So my range would be from negative five up to forever. My domain would be that I could have any value at all across this line because I know that it's going to give me some sort of y value. This one is considered a piecewise function, meaning that it's sort of broken into two different pieces. The domain of this would be any of the x's. So as I can see, moving to the left from zero, that this is gonna keep on going forever to the left, which in math, that means negative infinity. Going to the right, I can see that, again, this is going to go on forever, so that would also be to positive infinity. So going to the x-axis, there's going to be values anywhere I want over here. Now, be careful here in the middle. This would actually have like an open circle, and this would be a closed circle, meaning if I asked for f of zero, that would be zero rather than negative five, meaning this function goes all the way up to here but doesn't include this one, and then this function starts at zero and then goes on forever. But as we can see, even though there's a break this way, so a break from here to here, there's not a break going from left to right. So every value that I would ask you know, what's the value of the function at that point, I can find a value forever, anywhere. For the range, however, notice what I've got going on. I've got negative infinity, so looking at the y, this, this one goes on forever in the negative direction, so that's negative infinity. If I follow that up, that goes up to five, but it doesn't include five. So that goes up to five, sorry, negative five, but doesn't include it. Then I've got this gap here between negative five and zero. But then after that, so union, I've got starting at zero going on forever on the y. So starting at zero, and this one's actually gonna be closed because there's a closed dot at zero, and then going on forever. So the domain, of course, is dealing with the x's, and I can see that I've got values everywhere on the x. On the y, I've got values from negative infinity up to negative five, and then from zero up to forever. For this next example, this is a little bit different because this is considered a discrete function because they, we don't have lines, we just have points. So I have one, two, three, four, five points. The domain would be the x values of those points. So I'm really just going to list them like I did before. The x value, I have an x value of one because this is of course one four. So one would be my lowest x value. I have an x value of two. I have an x value of three because this is the point three two. I have an x value of four. And I have an x value of five. So that's my domain is just, whoops, 
just all of the x values. The range is all of the y values, so my lowest y value is 0. My next is 2, which happens twice, but I only write it once. My next is 3, and next is 4. So that's my domain and my range. Here's one for you to try on your own. So press pause, find the domain and the range, and then press play to check your work. The domain of this function is all of the x values that I can have. So if I'm looking at the x's, so I'm looking at this axis, I can see that as I go forever in the left direction, that I'm going to have values on my graph, which means that goes to negative infinity. Moving to the right, however, on the domain, I can see that at 5, my graph suddenly stops and I don't have any more graph. So 5 is the absolute most that it can go. It's unclear whether this is a closed circle or an open circle. Typically, they have something for us. So if it was an open circle, I would have an open bracket. If it was a closed circle, I would have a closed bracket. The range is the y value. So again, I'm, now I'm going to look at this axis and looking at the very lowest y value, that would be here at 0. So the range would start at 0. As I move up, I can see that, yes, this is going to go forever up to the left and up, which means it goes on to positive infinity. So I'm going to always have values as I move further up on the y-axis. I want to do these with you just as a practice to find the domain of some other functions. So for instance, for part A, this is a rational equation. And when we're dealing with the domain, notice I'm only asking for domain of a rational function. I know that my denominator can't equal to 0. So I'm going to find at what value would my denominator equal 0. And that would be negative 2. And so my domain would be all of the numbers from negative infinity up to negative 2 and then from negative 2 up to positive infinity. So it would be every value except for exactly negative 2. This is just a linear function, because this is like y equals 1 fifth x plus 0. A linear function has a domain of all real numbers, so negative infinity to positive infinity. This is a quadratic function, and a quadratic function, you can plug in any value that you want. There are no restrictions at all. So linear is fine, quadratic, any sort of polynomial is all real numbers. This, however, is a radical function, and radical functions do have restrictions on the domain because we can't have the radicand equal to 0. So I have to say that x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0, and then solve by adding 5. So x is greater than or equal to 5, which means my domain would be starting at 5, up to positive infinity.